All right. Happy Monday, everyone. I know I'm not here today, but um, we are going to follow kind of like it's class. You're going to take some notes. You're going to learn something new, and I'm going to come back tomorrow and expect you to have learned something. So with that being said, um, well, first of all, it's, it is the 16th, and this is, uh, this is Brian Wilson up here in the top right corner. He is a baseball player, and uh, I think right now he plays for the Dodgers, but it's his birthday today, so happy birthday to him. And I always think of, I, the reason I knew of him is because of his beard. He has a crazy big beard. But uh, anyway, um, what we're going to focus on today is the last method for solving systems of equations. We've worked with graphing, and we've worked with the substitution method. So this is called the elimination method. And your role during class today is to watch and listen to the entire video. I know it might be a little bit long, but you have the entire class period. Um, take notes throughout. So I actually want you to specifically write down and work through the examples that I give you. I'm going to check your notes tomorrow to make sure you did that. You need to do that. That is part of um, today's work. You need to write down and work through those examples and show me that you're putting some effort in to understand this method, this third method. This actually method, you're gonna, I hope, I think you're going to like. Um, for certain instances, it's it makes it really easy. So we're going to use the uh, this method. Make sure that you understand the concept too, because I want you to be ready for tomorrow. We're going to do some practice. Might give you a little quiz tomorrow too, um, but we'll see. So with that, let's do a quick review of how to solve systems of equations. And just a note, we have that systems of equations or linear equations are just two linear equations together. So I'll give you an example over here. A lot of times we use these nice bracket. You can say y equals 6x plus 3. Um, and you can have one, maybe one in um, point slope form. Oops. One in point slope form that's, or not, not point slope form, let's say standard form. That's 3x plus y equals 12. Just two, just two equations. There's just two equations, two lines on a graph, um, and our goal here is to figure out what solution, what what ordered pair they have in common that would work for both. So solving systems of equations, we've worked with uh, method number one was graphing. You're going to practice that with the one review, where you graph the two lines and find the point of intersection. Point of intersection, if there is a point of intersection, would be the um, the solution. So that's the first method. Second method that we talked about, which you don't even need to use a graph, was the substitution method. And the substitution, you do a lot of substituting, and you solve for both the x and the y, like you do um, in the graphing method. Um, only this is just all algebra. Now the third method we're going to talk about today is the elimination method. Sometimes it's called combination, but it's the elimination method, and that's what we're doing today. That is our, today's going to be our first day on it. We'll take a, uh, a day or two on it, because there are different uh, instances where there's different problems, different ways to go about it. So let's just do a recap now of, of the two methods that we've learned so far. So it says solve the system below both by graphing and by substitution. So if you don't have any graph paper, please go grab a square from the graph paper pile and um, work through solving this system of equations. You'll notice it's the same for both, but I need to see on your paper, I need to see you do the graphing method, find where they intersect on the graph and do the substitution method. By now you should be able to do both of them. We took a quiz on it, and we've done plenty of practice with it, um, and you need to know how to do these. So this is something, uh, this is a time where you really need to take note and work hard on making sure you get these. Okay, so if you want to pause it and go grab graph paper and, or open up a piece of, piece of paper and use these two methods, go ahead. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> All right, so overview of the graphing method, just to recap. We have two equations. You want to make sure they are in slope-intercept form for this y equals mx plus b. And these both are. You'll notice we're missing, let's see, we're missing a, 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 a coefficient in front of this x, so we'll just make it as a 1 because that's what it would be. And so the first one, our starting point is at the end here is 2 on the y-axis because that's called the y-intercept. And we're going to use a slope of 2 over 1 to go up 2 and over 1. And just to make sure to see, I'm not sure where it's going to extend or where they're going to cross, but we're going to go backwards 1 down 2 so that we have the whole um, the thing, the line extending in both directions. So I would use a straight edge to make sure your line looks accurate. Now the second one, so this is our first one. Second one I'll, use, I'll do in green. This one starts at negative 1. If you notice here, there's negative 1. Um, and the slope is 1 or 1 over 1. So we will go up 1 and over 1. Up one and over one. There's a couple points. Looks like they're getting farther apart of there. So we're going to go back one and down one. See if we can find the point of intersection there. So now what I'm going to do, just to check, because they might extend a ways, I am going to actually draw this line. Make it straight. And we'll make that one green like we said it was going to be. So there's our green line. And I will make this one, this one blue here. Looks like that's the line right there. We'll make it so that it's blue. And If you look right there, we found, we can see they where they finally crossed down at the very bottom. And that would be the point right here. The point of intersection is your solution. Which that point is negative 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 5. Looks like it. So our answer would be negative 4, negative 5. Now to check it, we can plug back in the x for the x in either equation and see if it's equal to the y here. Um, let's see. Ah, I see. I made a mistake. This is why the lines are so um, important to check. I'm going to erase this right here, and if you look right here, it should be going down 1, or down 2 and over 1, down 2 and over 2, or 1, so it should be right there, it should be going right there, and now we have a different point of intersection, that point of intersection which, if you do it correctly, should be right here, negative 3, negative 4, should be your answer. So I'm going to erase this, and because I know that I did it wrong the first time. And by checking it, you'll be able to tell whether you did it correct or not. So I'll just plug them in. I'll say negative 4. This first equation equals 2 times negative 3 plus. Okay, plus 2. So that would be negative 6 plus 2 equals negative 4, so we did it correct there. And if you look, I think it would work the same for the, the bottom equation. So that one is the correct solution. Now, what I'm going to do with this other method is the substitution method. It's another way to check. It's another way to get the correct answer. It's another way to, I mean, solve the solution. And it's a way to check to see if your graphing method was correct as well. So let's uh, go ahead and do this in purple here. So we have our two equations, y equals 2x plus 2 and y equals x minus 1 you got to make sure that at least one of them is solved for a variable. And if you notice, they're both solved for y. 
And when I say solve for a var variable, that means um, one variable has to be by itself on one side of the equation. So like y equals everything else. So y is by itself. So y is equal to this. And then if that's that if that whole thing is equal to y, like it says in this first equation, anywhere else that you see a y, you can replace it with that. So let's go like this and substitute in for the y here. I'm gonna so then it would be two x plus two equals x minus one. Since y is actually equal to 2x plus 2, we can replace the y with the 2x plus 2. And now you'll notice in this equation, there's only the x variable. And we can solve for the x variable by first getting the x terms on the same side. So I'm going to get rid of this 1x over here and subtract, and really that should be 1x, just remember. Subtract 1x over here. You'll have x plus 2 equals, we still have the negative one there. And to get the x by itself, we subtract 2 from both sides. Because this is plus 2. We end up with x equals negative 1 minus 2. We negative 3. And we have the first part of our solution. So we have negative 3. Now we have to figure out the y term. And if you look right there, we had negative 3 that way too. So let's check um, the y by taking that x equals 3. Now we know x is a number. So I'll use red for this. We'll plug in um, negative 3 for either one. I'll plug it in right there. And just put it into anywhere there's an x. And you can say y instead of y equals x minus 1, it's y equals negative 3 minus 1. Because x is negative 3. So let's just replace that there. Um, so then y is negative 3 minus 1, which is equal to negative 4. And we can put that back into our ordered pair. So negative 3, negative 4, it does look like our solution. We got the same answer using two different methods. And those are the two methods that we've learned to this point. Now what we're going to do is a new method, which is called elimination. So... Just a, an intro to elimination here. I, I wanted to take us back to like second grade when you started doing um, addition and subtraction. And I'm guessing this is one of the ways you did addition and subtraction, this vertical um, addition method and subtraction method. And let's look at to the left here. You have 421 plus 310. You can line them up so that the correct um, place of values, we have 1 and 0, those are the in the uh, ones to, uh, in the ones place, and this would be in the tens place, and this is the hundreds place. You can line them up and add them. Just add the, each place. So if you add them here, I use yellow. One plus zero is one. We know that. Um, two plus one is three. We know that. And then four plus three is seven. So our answer would be four seven hundred thirty-one because we added um, just the place values. Now you can do the same thing with subtraction. You probably can do this in your head, but just subtract each of the places and one minus zero in the ones place, that would be one. Two minus one would be one, and three minus one would be one as well. So you get one eleven. Okay? If you can get this idea, you can get the elimination method. You can get the basic gist of the elimination method if you understand that idea of adding or subtracting the place values. So, let's do it. This is how we do the addition, elimination by addition, kind of like we did addition up here. The elimination by addition is very simply put like this. So I have a system of equations. This is my system of equations right here. This is my system of equations. What you want to make sure you have is things lined up, kind of like the place values lined up. We have the x's lined up, we have the y's lined up, and we have the, the constants that are alone by themselves all lined up. Even the equal signs are lined up. Those are important parts. Everything needs to be lined up. Now, addition, the addition method of elimination. The idea behind elimination is we're trying to eliminate something. And we're trying to eliminate one of the variables. So we can just solve for the other one. Let's just take a look. What, is a, what does the word eliminate mean? 
So if we Google eliminate, eliminate, eliminate means to completely remove or get rid of. We're going to try and remove or get rid of something. And in that, that's something in, in this elimination method is a variable. So what you can do is you can take these, make sure they're lined up, and if you want to rewrite them, you can. But I have 3x plus 2y equals 1. If you notice, these are standard form. I have the x still right here, which is 1x, uh, minus 2y equals negative 19. I'm going to make this just like an addition problem. And add everything. So when I add all the places, if you notice here, the idea is that right here we have one variable, the y terms. One is a 2y and one is a negative 2y, which are opposites, and that's where our, our elimination is going to come in. If you have something that's opposites in, in your two equations, you can just add the two equations to cancel out that variable. So I'm going to add it to the right, so from right to left. 1 plus negative 19, we'll keep the equal sign. 1 plus negative 19 is really 1 minus 19, which would be negative 18. Um, we have nothing here because positive 2y plus negative 2y is 0. So we have nothing here. And then we have 3x plus 1x would be 4x. So 4x equals 18. If we did it all correct, 4x equals 18. Now we can solve for x because 4x equals 18. Just divide, I'll, I'll rewrite right here, equals 18. Divide both sides by 4 and you get what x is. And I believe it doesn't quite work out right perfectly, but I think it's 4.5. So Boom, we have our x. We know that our x value in the solution is 4.5. We'll just figure out what our y value is. By doing just like we did with the substitution method then, we can take that 4.5 and we can plug it in anywhere in either equation. So I'm going to take that and I'm going to plug it in right there. So we'll say, um, if we bring this down, we'll say instead of 1x, we'll have, instead of x, we'll have 4.5. Actually, you know what? I'm going to show it like this. I'm just going to go back into our original equation, which is the same as what I rewrote. But just to show you, it would be 4.5 minus 2y equals negative 19. Um, subtract 4.5 because we want to get the variable term by itself from both sides to cancel out. We'll have negative 2y equals... Sorry about that. Negative 2y equals um, negative 23.5. And you can use a calculator if you're not sure on that. And then lastly, divide both sides by that coefficient to get y equals, I believe we have 11.5. So I'll just plug that in there, 11.75, and that's our answer. Worked out nicely. It wasn't a ton of work. The first step was way easier than even a lot of substitution method problems because it just cancels something out, and you have to do one step to solve. So our one step was right here. This only works, this elimination method only works if you have something that can cancel out, like the 2y and the minus 2y. Those cancel out when you add the two equations together. So this is by um, elimination by addition. And what I'd like to do here is to show you a quick video um, to help reiterate this idea of all this by um, this elimination by addition method. Use the elimination method to solve this system of equations. To use the elimination method, we want to combine together these two equations in such a way that one of the variables is eliminated. To do this, we can use addition, subtraction, and multiplication. 
That means that there's more than one way to solve a system using the elimination method. So this is just one way that we can use the elimination method to solve a system. In step number one, we want to write out our system. And since our equations are already written on the board, we can go to step two. In step two, we want to eliminate one of the variables by combining together our equation. So let's look at our equation. We have 2x minus y equals 2 and 2x plus y equals 6. Now if we look at them closely, we see that in the first equation we have a negative y and in the second equation we have a positive y. So if we were simply to add these equations together, those y's would cancel out. So let's do that. We'll take our first equation, 2x minus y equals 2, and add our second equation to it, 2x plus y equals 6. Now we want to combine each one of the variables and constants separately. So I lined up the x variables, the y variables, and then the numbers. Now we combine. 2x plus 2x is 4x. A minus y and a plus y cancel each other out. Then we bring down our equal sign, and 6 plus 2 is 8. Now look what happened. When we combined our two equations together, we eliminated the y variable. And we're just left with the x variable. So we can solve for x, and we get that x equals 2. This is the first half of our solution. x equals 2. Now all we need to do is find the second half the y value. So in step number three, we want to find the y value. To do this, we want to take the value that we found for x and plug it in to both of our original equations to get y. So taking our first equation, we have 2x minus y equals 2. Plugging in 2, we have 2 times 2 minus y equals 2. So 4 minus y equals 2, or y equals 2. So we have a value for y. Now let's make sure that we got that same value in our second equation. So we have 2x plus y equals 6. Substituting in 2 for x, and then solving for y, we get again that y equals 2. So when we took our x value and plugged it into both of our original equations, in both cases we got that y equals 2. So that means that we have the solution for our system. The solution for this system is the ordered pair 2 comma 2. If we take the ordered pair 2 comma 2 and plug it into both of our original equations, we will get a true statement in both cases. So that means the solution 2 comma 2 is the only solution to this system. And since it only has one solution, this system is both consistent and independent. So that's uh, another, just another way to show you that you can use elimination by adding the two equations. Just like we can add numbers um, by adding their different place values, the ones, the tens, the hundreds, we can do the same thing with equations. Just add what's lined up. As long as the x's are lined up, we can add them. The same thing with y's and the constants. But we're looking for something to eliminate. And we can eliminate, uh, especially one of the variables to eliminate. So I'm going to show you something very similar now, but this is going to be elimination method by subtraction. So instead of adding both the equations, we are going to subtract. Um, so elimination by subtraction method. If you notice here, we have two equations. They're both in standard form again, but there's nothing that's opposites. If you notice, there's a 2x and a 1x. Those aren't quite opposites. And by the way, I'll write 1x. I'll write the 1 in here just so you know this is 1x. They're not opposites. They're not going to cancel each other out yet. Um, we have 1y and 1y, but they're both positive. So in order to cancel them out, one of them has to be the opposite or negative. So what we can do is we can write them out. I'm going to write them out over here. Again, 2x plus 1y equals 5. And 
1x plus 1y equals 1. So to this is very similar to just subtracting three digit numbers. We are going to subtract this whole equation. But just like subtracting, we're going to subtract all the parts. We're not going to just go, we're not going to just subtract the one that we want to subtract. We're going to subtract all of them, um, all of the different parts, kind of like distributing the subtraction to all of them. So we're going to subtract the, the 1 from the 5 over here. We're not going to add that. We, we would subtract all of it. So 5 minus 1 is 4. 1y um, minus 1y is nothing. So those cancel out. And then we have 2x minus 1x, which is 1x, or just x. So we have x equals 4. And we already have our x value then. So 4 is our x. Now to find the y, just like before, we're going to take that x and plug it back into either equation. So I'm going to plug it back into this one. You know, let's do both of them just to check to make sure we did it right. And that one. So I'll do two, I'll do the first one. Two, instead of two x is two times four plus y equals five. And over here it would be um, one times four, just four plus y equals one. This is going to be eight plus y equals five. Subtract eight from both sides. And you get y equals negative three. Now over here, um, we can just subtract 4 from both sides to cancel out those 4s, and you get y equals negative 3. So in both cases, you get y equals negative 3, which means that our y value then is negative 3. And our solution to this system is 4, comma 3. That's where if we graphed them, the two lines would cross. That is the one intersecting point of this system. So that's the subtraction method. And just to reiterate the subtraction method, I'd like to show you this other quick video. method to find the solution for the system of equations written on the board. Since we're trying to use the elimination method, we want to use addition, subtraction, or multiplication to help us combine together these two equations in such a way that one of the variables is eliminated. Now there's more than one way to use the elimination method to solve a particular system, so this is just one example. Let's start out by writing out our equations. Normally we would need to write out our equations, but since they're already written on the board, we can look at step two. In step number two, we want to use the elimination method. So, we want to use addition, subtraction, or multiplication to combine these two equations together to eliminate one of the variables. So let's look at our equations. We have 2x minus y equals 2, and 2x plus y equals 6. Now for this example, let's try to eliminate the x variable. So in equation 1, we have 2x. And in equation 2, we have 2x. So our x's have the same coefficient of 2. What would happen if we combined our two equations together by addition? If we were to just add equation 1 and equation 2 together, would our x's be eliminated? No, they wouldn't be. Even though our x's have the same coefficient, they also have the same sign. So if we were to simply add the equations together, we wouldn't eliminate our x's. But if one of our x's were negative, then our x values would be eliminated. So we could make this a positive 2x. And we could make this a negative 2x. In other words, let's take equation 2 and subtract it from equation 1. So let's write out equation 1. Then we want to take equation 2 and subtract it, but we want to subtract the entire equation. So we need to be sure to apply that negative to every term in our equation. So we need to distribute that negative 
into all of our terms and equations too. When we do, we get negative 2x minus y equals negative 6. Now we can combine our equations together. Notice, our x's are lined up, our y's are lined up, our equal signs are lined up, and our numbers are lined up. If you set up your equations like this, it will be a lot easier to combine them. Now when we combine these two equations, we get 2x minus 2x. Hey, our x's cancel out just like we wanted. Perfect. Then we have a minus y and a minus y. That gives us a negative 2y, and we bring down our equal sign, and 2 minus 6 is a negative 4. Now look what happened. When we combined our equations together, we eliminated our x variable, and we're just left with y. When we solve for y, we get that y equals 2. So now we have half of our solution to this system, y equals 2. All we need to do to get the rest of our solution is find x. So in step number three, we want to use the value that we just found for y to find x. To do that, we want to take the value we got for y and plug it into both of our original equations in our system and solve for x. So taking our first equation, 2x minus y equals 2, we plug in the value we got for y. Then we solve for x. And we get that x equals 2. So now we have a value for x. Great! Let's verify that we get the same value when we plug that y value into our second equation. So we have 2x plus y equals 6. Substituting in 2 for y and solving for x, we get 2x equals 4, or x equals 2 again. So we got the same x value for our second equation. That means that we found our solution, x equals 2 and y equals 2. So the solution for this system of equations is the ordered pair 2 comma 2. If we take the ordered pair 2 comma 2 and plug it in to both of our equations in our system, we will get a true statement in both cases. And since 2 comma 2 is the only solution for this system, this system is considered consistent and independent. This is just one example of how to use the elimination method to solve a system of equations. So you'll notice with that one, you could have used the addition and canceled out the, the y terms right away. But to show that you can also use subtraction, she subtracted the whole thing from both sides and um, solved by elimination by subtraction. All right. So just a couple tips that we've that might help when we're using the elimination method. First of all, it's often useful um, when the equations are in standard form. That's the most common way that we're going to use it. And if it's if it's not in standard form, then then you could just if they're both in like slope-intercept form, then you could graph them or use substitution. Probably easier. Um, but oftentimes when they're in standard form, we might want to think about using the elimination method. So, standard form. Um, second hit tip, make sure that the correct variables are lined up. So, for instance, I'll bring this down right here. You have to have, so you don't want to have x plus y equals 6, and then the variable is 2, negative 2y two plus x equals 4 because they're not lined up. So we don't want that. We want it to have it lined up so x plus y equals 6 and x minus 2y oops, equals 4. So that the, the correct um, variable terms are lined up so we can subtract or add um, whichever we have to do. And then lastly, don't forget to solve for both x and y. Sometimes we like to just solve for x, and then we're like, yes, we're done. But then you have to find the y value that goes with it, too, since a solution is an ordered pair x and y. So there's a couple helpful tips for you. Um, let's do some quick practice on telling whether we'd use addition or subtraction. So if you look, we want to look for some, which would you use, addition or subtraction for the elimination? And... The reason I'm doing this is because sometimes you do want to add, just add the two terms because you already have opposites. And sometimes you have to subtract um, 
because they're the same signs. So let's just look at a few of them. You can take a look at these and try these on your own if you want to pause it. Um, try these, actually do, do that. Try these on your own, pause it. Just do numbers one through six and determine if you would use addition or subtraction for your first step of elimination. Okay, hopefully you paused and hopefully you got answers for these. Let's check them. So this first one you can see um, these have the same negative y and negative y. We can cancel out using the negative y's, but they're the same sign. So in order to make one the opposite sign, we, we want to subtract. We, we want to use subtraction for the second one. So we can subtract everything. So it would be minus x. It would be minus negative y, which would be plus y, and then minus 10. Um, the second one, same thing. We're going to want to subtract everything so that we can cancel out this negative and make it so it's plus x, and those are opposites. Since those are the ones we're looking at right there. So we're going to want to use subtraction again for that one. Number three, we have plus y and we have minus y. Those will cancel out, so let's just use addition. We can add everything and those will cancel out, and then we'll have just the x terms there. Um, this one we have x and negative x, so this one will also use addition. This one over here, this one we have positive x, positive x. We don't want to add them because then we'd have 2x. So we want to use subtraction and subtract everything here. Subtract everything, so you have minus x, those will cancel out. And you, subtract the, and you have to subtract all the parts if you're going to do subtraction. And this third one I'd also use, or sorry, the sixth one, I'd also use subtraction because those are both the same signs. So I would use subtraction to cancel out, and then you subtract all the other parts as well. So that's just a little helpful hint on how you start some problems. So what I'd like you to do now is to um, work on these first two problems. So you can pause it and use what we just learned about the elimination method. Um, using either subtraction or addition to solve these first two problems. And I will work through them with you as well. If you want to pause it and then check, that'd be great. So I'm going to look and I'm going to say, I see these in common right there. There's a negative y and a negative y. So in order to undo, to cancel one of them out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I am going to subtract the whole bottom one. And the reason I'm going to subtract is so that I can cancel out that negative to make it a plus. And when I subtract, I subtract everything. So subtraction to there, subtraction here, subtraction here, that becomes, um, if you do subtraction, you can do plus and negative x. Minus and that's going to be plus and then minus here. So it would be 17 minus 10, which would be 7. Here your equals. Negative x plus, or say, sorry, negative y plus y would be nothing. And then we have 2x minus 1x, which is just 1x. So we have x equals 7. And then you can take your x and you can plug it back in. So we're going to plug it back into one of our original equations here. And let's see. Let's just go ahead and put it right back in here. And we'll do two. You can put them in for both, though. You know, why don't I just put them in for both? So we can check both ways on this one. So it would be 2 times 7 minus y equals 17. Or it would be, um, it'd be 7 minus y equals 10. And so in this case, over here, we have 14 minus y equals 17. Subtract 14 from both sides. We have negative, really this is a negative 1y, negative 1y equals 3. And solve by dividing both sides by negative 1. So y equals negative 3. 
Over here we do the same thing, only we're going to subtract 7 from both sides first. This will be a 1 coefficient. And you have negative 1 equals negative 1 y equals 3. And divide both sides by negative 1. y equals negative 3. So if you get the same for both, our x value is going to be 7. And our y value is negative 3. So our solution equals 7, negative 3. Okay, hope you don't mind. I'm going to go ahead and minimize some of this. Again, you can work at your own pace. Um, so you got 7, negative 3 there. Let's look at the second one. Second one, we're going to also do subtraction. Um, so, to undo this, since we have right here, we have in common, we have these in common with the same coefficient. Um, we want to make one the opposite, so we want to make one a positive. So, to do that, we're going to subtract the bottom thing. So just like before, I'm going to subtract everything here. When I subtract, it's going to make this positive. It's going to make this negative because we're subtracting. And we're, that's going to make this positive. And then we'll get rid of that. So 9 plus 2, we got 11. Um, negative 7y plus negative 9y would be negative 16y, if my calculations are correct there. And then these x's will cancel out. All right. When we cancel those x's out, we have nothing uh, for x's there. And then y equals, if we divide both sides by negative 16, you get negative 11 over 16. Now that's not a very good answer, not a very nice answer, because that doesn't really help us too much here. Um, that makes it a lot of work to find our, um, I'm going to make this neater. find our x value, since the y is such a weird um, fraction there. But, we can plug that back in, and let's plug that in, it doesn't really matter which one, it's going to be a little funky either way. We'll have negative x minus 7 times 11 over 16. Just one second. <clears throat> okay, so I apologize for that. I made a little uh, correction there. Um, I missed out this, this 3. It should have been negative 23 at the end. So then you end up with 9 plus 23 is 32, and our y is a negative 2. So when you get negative 2 there, um, you can plug in negative 2 for... Um, our, our our y value, since y is negative 2, we can plug it in for our y value, and we have negative x minus 7y equals 9, so we're going to have 9, and this is going to be negative x plus 14, because negative 7 times negative 2, which is positive 14, equals 9. Subtract 14 from both sides, um, you end up getting negative x equals negative 5, and if you divide both sides or take away the negative from both sides, you end up getting x equals positive 5. So our solution there is 5, negative 2. Five negative two would be your solution for number two. Now, what I'd like you to do for homework is to continue to finish this worksheet, this elimination, complete the elimination worksheet one, which is on Moodle. There's also an answer key on Moodle for the rest of this. This was numbers one and two, believe it or not. Um, this is numbers one and two, and the rest of the worksheet is on Moodle. I think there's a total of eight problems. So I'd like you to try the, the rest of those, the last six, for tomorrow and come with any questions that you have.
All right. I do expect this to be completed, though. You have all the tools to complete it. All right. We'll see you tomorrow.